Because everybody wants the secret sauce. How do I, how do I, how do I? Well, we're gonna talk about that today. But before we do that, I wanna do a little exercise. I know you just ate, <laughs> comfortable. I want everybody to put their hands in the hair and reach as high as you can. All right? Just reach as high as you can. Now reach a little bit more. Reach a little bit more. Okay. That little bit more that you reached after I asked you to reach up to the sky, that's what it takes to be successful. That extra inch or two is what you need to incorporate into your life daily to become successful in whatever you want to accomplish. Most of us in this world we're on cruise control at this level. We're comfortable here. That extra inch or two, uh, no. Jacket to get wrinkled, dress is gonna move, hair. That extra inch or two is what it takes to become successful in what you're trying to accomplish in life. You control that. I can't control that. You control that. Success, for the sake of this presentation and keynote today, I'm gonna define it as accomplishing what you commit to achieve. Most issues that come about today is people think success is reaching a certain type of success. We need to, what you need to acknowledge and realize is you need to be happy with all levels of success, big or small. Because when you acknowledge small wins, that puts you mentally in the capacity to appreciate when you achieve a goal. Achieving goals is the path and what we should set to move forward in life. Setting your goals and putting those systems in place is what we should strive to every day. <clears throat> I readjust my goals every day. I have a list, top five, top 10, where I finish off in the day, if I end off at number four, and there's five through 10 that's left, that's where I pick up tomorrow. And then I adjust the next adjust for room for more. But I acknowledge those small wins. So appreciate small wins, because they matter. They put you in the right capacity mentally to be able to appreciate your journey. When you see success as only having $5 million in the bank account, being on TV, winning a Grammy, what about the journey? What are you living for? Where's the appreciation for life? What fuels our desires to win? So what makes us think $5 million is a success? Or winning a Grammy is success? Or an Oscar? Or winning an award is success? Social media is very impactful. Media is very impactful. We have access today to turn on our phones, and tap into other people's lives. And by us tapping into those lives, we trick ourselves to deem and think that that's what success is. See Beyonce and Jay-Z, see Kanye and uh, Kim Kardashian, you see Rihanna. Like that success for a lot of people might not be the people here, <coughs> but guess what our children are thinking about? Guess what the people who are just entering college are thinking about? they don't have the proper tools in place or the proper foundation to understand it's more than this. <clears throat> Today, this is the power of social media. 2.1, and this is a very recent data, 2.1 billion active users. These are active. These are people that are actually on their phones, computers, using these tools. 2.1 billion people are actively on Facebook. <laughs> How many people are on Facebook? Much everybody, right? How many people here get influenced by, by Facebook and you know, seeing the journey and stories of people, what's going on in their lives? 1.5 billion people on YouTube. 800 million on Instagram. 330 million on Twitter. How many people might be, are a little surprised by these numbers or did you feel like, okay. 1.5 on WhatsApp, group messages. 187 million on Snapchat. 1.3 billion on Facebook Messenger. So you have 2.1 on the Facebook platform, 1.3 
on Messenger. Feel free to take images of these shots as we go through. WeChat, 980 million monthly active users. How easy is it to influence or create a story or a journey for the people within your network? Some of it is true, some of it is false. But having access to this is up to you to pull out what makes sense for your journey to incorporate into your lives. So don't be influenced by other people's journey and story. You have your own unique journey and story. It's up to you to write your own story in your journey and be satisfied with it, be happy with that journey. Power move number one, be authentic and real with yourself. Being real with yourself will help you identify your strengths and your weaknesses. You can only identify that if you're real with yourself. That person you see in the mirror doesn't lie. That person is telling you who you are. Some of us don't believe it and go out and live another life. But when it's time to actually grow a business, scale a business, it only happens if you're real with the business. A lot of people go into business feeling, if I get this incremental seed money of a million dollars, my business is gonna be booming. What's gonna happen is you're gonna work yourself out of business because that, that million dollars is a front. That proof, of, that proof of concept isn't there. You don't need that million dollars. You need to work hard until your business is sustainable. Once it's running, then you can look at bringing in that incremental dollars to make your business move. So it starts with you being real and authentic with yourself. And from there, you can move on. <clears throat> Number two. Accept the challenge to achieve your goals. It starts with you. So now you need to accept the challenge of achieving your goals because it is not easy. And if it is easy, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Goals are challenges. Mentally, they should put you in a, in, in a space where you're scared. It's not easy to achieve goals. It's the point. Life isn't easy, but if you put the proper, proper tools in place, it can help your journey along the way. One, point one, set your goals and put your systems in place. Now visualize each step to move forward towards achieving your goals. So there's goals, I wanna write a book, I wanna lose 100 pounds, I wanna raise a million dollars, 15,000. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's systems. What are you doing? What are you doing to lose those 15 pounds? Or raise that money? <clears throat> or write a book? When I was doing my book, I knew that it would take time to put this together. One, because of all the people in the book, so I could go back and interview. But two, I'm dyslexic, so it's not easy for me to sit there, write, read. It takes time for me to both of them. But doing that, I was able to <clears throat> realized that I needed to set an hour, two hours a day to put down a thousand words here, two thousand words here to achieve my goal of 70,000 words to give you a full product. I had the goal of the book, but the system was me sitting down one hour, two hours a day until I achieved that 70,000 word goal to put the book together. So you have your system, you have your goals, but don't forget the systems. The systems is what helps you achieve that goal. And then visualize it. Play it through your head. See your journey as a movie. Nothing should really be a surprise because you should, when I was in college playing college basketball, my coach used to say, play the game through your head. When you play the game through your head, first doing the, 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 the studying and research first to understand the players on the other team, how they adjust, how they play, and how, you know, what I was about to face, I played that through my head. I played the entire game through my head. So when I made a move, I knew how they, the, the defender would react. And I played that through my head over and over again like a movie. Your journey, you should play through your head like a movie. <coughs> Become an expert in your industry. Nobody should be smarter than you in whatever industry you're trying to get into. 
especially if you're an entrepreneur or corporate America. I'm in community affairs with their Miller Corps, and it's my job to understand the ins and outs of the community affairs uh, team, understanding how nonprofits function today, focusing on you know how they're bringing in capital, how they utilize the capital. So when we're giving dollars, we know how they function. Put action behind your visualization and insight. Now that you've visualized this, now it's time to play the game. Now it's time for me to practice 100 uh, free throws. It's time for me to, to put the action behind it and the insight behind the actual play. So don't set your goals. Put your systems in place. Become an expert and do nothing. How many people come to you and say, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna start this new blog, I'm gonna start this new business, five months down the line. Yeah, I'm gonna start this new blog. <laughs> a year later, I'm gonna start this new blog, I'm gonna start this new business. It's all talk, don't be the talker. Because it's like, boy, who cried wolf? And then when you come to me and say, hey, I wanna start this new blog and start this new business, I'm gonna shut you down. Because my time is valuable. Surround yourself with the right people who want to see you succeed, like a mentor or an advisor. It's almost impossible, it's about 99.6% impossible for you to do what you're saying. 99.6% impossible for you to do it yourself. I know a lot of us are intimidated to make the phone call, reach out to somebody on LinkedIn, reach out to somebody on Facebook, talk to the person at your table. What does it hurt to ask? They hurt your feelings and said no? It's a billion people in this planet. One person says no, it's billions more who are there that <laughs> just say yes. Number three, which is very important, and these aren't in order of importance, it's just how I wanted to flow. Number three, Failure is a great teacher and a secret to success. If you are not failing at anything, you are not trying hard enough. <clears throat> Greatness doesn't happen in the comfort zone. If you start a new job, if you're an entrepreneur, and you're comfortable every day, most likely you're not where you want to be. Those key lessons in life come through failure because now you know what not to do. If this door didn't work for me and it didn't open, try another door and another door and another door until I figure it out. But I wouldn't know unless I tried. And failure is okay. Everybody in this world fails. Failure is a part of life, failure is a part of journey. But the ones who move on and become successful are the ones who understand that and use that as an advantage because you learn those lessons. So don't be afraid of failure. It's okay. Failure is okay. Time management. I was having a conversation earlier. I have a newborn, he's six months, and it's like, how do you manage that time? My wife, she's on TV, she's working, she has her career, we both have our careers. But there will never be a time that one of us isn't there for him. So instead of me being out two or three days on a trip, now it's in and out. After this, I'm on a plane back to New York. <coughs> Make sure I see the babysitter, leave, and I'm there. Wife gets home at one o'clock, she's in the state, and I'm traveling or vice versa. One of us are always there. Time management. And I'm gonna give, I want you to do an exercise. But time is the most valuable resource that you have. Time that's gone by since I've been talking, you will never get back. I hope it's worth it, but you will <laughs> never get it back. So take, remember that. It's the most valuable resource that you have. So when somebody calls, or somebody sends a DM, or email, wanting to spend 30 minutes with you, 45 minutes with you, an hour. Does that time bring value to that individual or myself? 
If not, why am I doing it? Time management is so important in priority. So when you have your priorities in order, knowing what is important in your life and your journey, it's gonna help you towards your purpose. When you have your time management in place, life is so much easier. It makes so much more sense. Because the people who you meet with, there's a direct impact for that person or for you. And it's leading towards your purpose. If it's not, why are you doing it? Why are you wasting your time? You know how many people right now in the next minute are gonna have their last breath and wish they had that minute you just wasted on something that makes no sense? Account for every hour of your day by creating a list of how your time is being spent. So a little exercise I would like for you to do. Not now, your own time. Write on a piece of paper, 24 hours, and it could be yesterday or it could be tonight after the day is done. Write down what you did for every hour. See where you could have saved an hour, saved two hours, saved three hours. And be accountable to yourself. Because one of the things that come out all the time is, I didn't have enough time to do that business. I didn't have enough time to do go shopping. I didn't have enough time to do this. Well. Did you spend two hours binge watching the show? <laughs> Be accountable for self. Track those 24 hours. See what you spend those 24 hours. Because there's 168 hours in a week, 24 hours in a day. If you save two hours on Monday, another two hours on Thursday, that's four hours you could have dedicated towards your passion or purpose. This is how I spend mine. 23% of my day is on sleep. 33% on my job, 15% on family, 11% to eat, 10% on a passion project, and 8% to self. Find out how you're spending your days. Visualization, we talked about visualization earlier and the importance of seeing it through, like a movie. How did I grow? What did I gain? How did I grow today? It's a question you should ask yourself. How did I grow today? <clears throat> what did I gain? Did it advance where I was trying what I was trying to achieve, my goals? How is the action beneficial? How is your time here spent today beneficial to you? If progress was made, how can I see more? If by being here today there was progress or advancement in what you're trying to accomplish, the right thing would do would be to understand how you can do more of it. Maybe it's the organization. Maybe the organization provided these tools to you and they offer these tools throughout the year. Maybe you want to become a member, be involved with the organization and get more of this if it was beneficial to you. If no, What would be a more effective strategy? If it wasn't beneficial, all right, what else could I have done for it to be beneficial? Where maybe it was setting a goal today to meet five people. And through that five, understanding their career, what they're involved with, how it could benefit, be beneficial for both, for both parties. And maybe there's a benefit there. Maybe, maybe it's next time I come to a conference, I set goals of what I'm trying to accomplish, so there's an agenda when you get here instead of blindly attending, right? Number six, breaking down old habits. It's very simple. If you want to see change, change your habits. It's that simple. A lot of us have habits from when we were children that are still impacting us today that we don't even realize because we haven't been real with ourselves. If you want to make more money, change your habits. If you want to lose weight, change your habits. If you want to be on time, change your habits. You have control of that. Number seven, effectively communicating will help you sell your vision. Being able to effectively communicate will help you sell water to a whale. 
being able to communicate and sell your vision will put you in a better place. So if you know you're not an effective communicator, guess what? There are classes for it. I took an effective speaking course when I was in college because I knew I wanted to be in front of people to talk and share my journey. There are online courses, there are online videos. There's so many tools in this world. There's so much access to information in this world. It is unbelievable. But you control that push of a button. You control filling out that application. Because effectively being able to communicate, you can accomplish almost anything in this world. Barack Obama was amazing at effectively communicating. He could get on that stage and make you believe in anything. Can't say so much now. <laughs> but he's, he was amazing. He knew the importance of it. There's different agendas. One knows the importance of it. One really doesn't care. Because there's other things he's, he's able to accomplish without doing but he has the proper people in place to communicate that message. Number eight, we were all in sales, so, stop, so, stop, so start selling. Oh, I wanna be a marketer, I don't wanna really wanna be in sales. What do you think you're doing when you're trying to get funding for a business? You're selling your idea, you're selling your vision. You're courting somebody. You want to be in a relationship. You're selling your story and your journey to make this person believe in you, to actually want to spend time with you. You're in corporate America. You want to climb that corporate ladder. You're selling your capabilities to your manager, to your colleagues. So when you're not in the room, they're there to talk in, on your behalf and talk positively about you. We're all in sales. So remember that. Start selling. Number nine is only this and the next one. Um, three P's. Very important, I want you to remember. Purpose, passion, and patience. Purpose, what are you living for? What do you get up to, to do and accomplish every day? What do you love to do? What is the thing you would do without getting paid for? every day. What is your purpose? Identify your purpose. If you're not trying to identify your purpose, why are you living? Why are you waking up every day? Is it just to wake up and make the next person's life better? Purpose. Identify your purpose. And when I say the next person, not your significant other or anything like that, I'm talking about boss or somebody within another organization that has identified their purpose and you're making their dreams come true. Purpose. Identify your purpose. Once you identify your purpose, life makes more sense. Because once you identify your, your purpose, you can put the passion behind it to make it happen. Now that you've identified your purpose, you know what you're working towards. So you put that energy, you put that wood in the fire to, to energize achieving that purpose in which you live for every day. And patience. Nothing happens overnight. It takes time. Your journey, what you're passionate about, what you love, it takes time to get to where you want it to be. It took Jay-Z 15 years to become Jay-Z. Jay-Z didn't become Jay-Z overnight. Steve Jobs, he went through so much to become Steve Jobs. But it was the patience that allowed for the purpose to flourish because when you have patience, you know what you're working towards. So when you have misfortune, when you come along failure, it's okay because you know what you're working towards. You learn those lessons and keep moving. You might not get over the hurdle this time, but you learn and you know what you need to do to get over it next time. Just get around it. Patience is important. It takes time to be great. It doesn't happen overnight. Be patient with yourselves. 
Understand your journey. Understand what you're working towards. Understand that it takes time. It's not gonna happen overnight. It takes you attending these conferences and being a part of these amazing organizations that are offering tools for you to continue to grow and be great. But it takes patience. Then last, Nothing will work unless you do. I can give you a hundred more power moves. I can share a thousand more secrets with people that I've sat down with who are doing amazing things. But it means nothing if you write down these notes, take these pictures, and tomorrow get back to your old habits. Nothing will work unless you do. So I encourage you to go home and do the 24 hour chart and see where you're spending your hours to be real with yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and identify who that person is and have you been telling that person the truth throughout this journey. Identify your purpose, identify your goals, daily goals, five month goals, yearly goals, and put the systems in place to achieve that. These are some <clears throat> common threads and power moves that were shared throughout the book. The common thread is they all said the same thing and we were all in different rooms, in different parts of the world. So there is no big secret or aha. It's just applying and adjusting things that are within you already. Identifying it, being real with yourself, and pushing forward with patience. The mind of a winner is about access to methodologies and habits that you don't get gain access to every day, you don't read in a bio, or we'll pull up on the internet like that. Understanding how a collective group of individuals think, how they overcame failure because they all failed. These are the power moves. This is what I wanted to share. And I'm on social media, everything Steve can have. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, my purpose is to share information. I want you to become the CEO of your own personal brand. So everything that I post, my journey, my purpose, everything that I put out is to encourage you to be great. I'm a private individual. I do not like, I could be in this room and not speak to anybody in this room and be fine. <laughs> But I know for my purpose, I need to be able to share and talk about my journey as well because it might encourage somebody. I've been able to work with over 30,000 entrepreneurs, fund small businesses, do some amazing things with some great people. But individual, I want each and every one of you to be successful. So if you're on my Instagram, you'll see images of me, my wife, my son, me giving checks away to organizations, because so, I want people to know it's cool, it's okay. Because one of the questions is, how do I find a mentor? There's, how, how many people are on Facebook and Instagram? There's billions of images, posts, in, inspirational posts, journeys that are there already. You just need to identify who those people are that you should be following. I would highly suggest you delete mental terrorists from your follows because those people aren't encouraging you or putting you in a position to be successful. You need to follow the people who are encouraging your journey. You control who you follow, right? <laughs> exactly. So if you need that encouragement, if you need that mentorship, usually the people I'm following, the people that follow me, it starts there. I mean, go down a rabbit hole. Go find one person, that person will lead you to so many other people. Then you map your journey there. From my entrepreneurs, those who are always trying to source, you know, photographers or edit videos. Um, Here's some tools once you do identify the photographer, you do identify the videographer, um, or if you don't have the time and you have your phone, these are apps. Vidmob, you can video edit. Uh, Vidzi, you, video production. Refuel for Facebook campaigns, if you don't know how to do campaigns. Um, Instagram influencers. Canva is amazing as well. 
because if you have your business and you want to do a special on a shirt or a service, upload the image, put the graphics up, boom, you have a flyer. It's for free. So I always want to want to leave something with, with people as well. And I'll go back to this slide here as well. So how many people are active on these sites? So people always ask. What's more important? Should I get on Facebook or should I get on YouTube? Well, if collectively you do it, that's 3.6 billion people you can touch. It might overlap, so it might not be all 3.6, but there's influence in both. I'm an Instagram guy, so I live on Instagram. Some people are Twitter people, some people are Facebook. So creating a campaign that lives within all is important. This is for personal brand and entrepreneurs as well. It's important because you're gonna reach people that might not be on all platforms. So to answer your question, it's important to do all, but understand the platforms. Facebook, it's the biggest media company in the world, and the biggest opportunity for you to spy on your, your family members, friends. <laughs> YouTube, it's like a TV channel. Instagram, visually, you're putting your life on it's like a magazine. Instagram's your, your own personal magazine. People are flipping through, looking at your story and your journey with that caption. It's a magazine. What does your magazine represent? What is the story being told there? With that mind of a winner, thank you for your time. Thanks a lot for, for giving that information. And so, you know, usually when a speaker they give you the fantastic information, and if they have a product, you know, you know, they don't set up outside to, to sell, right? Steve, we have books for you. You don't have to purchase. We're going to give everybody that register. Oh,